Hey, seventh grade, welcome to a really quick lecture about livable planets or habitable planets and our search for those throughout uh, our astronomical history. So uh, there are no slides for today, but you're going to still have to take notes so you know what makes a livable planet. So just go ahead and take notes on what I say. If I talk way too fast, use the little gear icon down in the right hand corner and just put the video speed slower. I'm sorry. I'm a northerner. I talk fast. So, what I want you to think about first are two things. What are the two things that you think are the most necessary items for life? Go ahead, take a second, pause the video if you need to. Here's my little do 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 shoulder dance. And the answer is energy and water. If you said those two things, Good job, you get a gold star, pat on the back. I owe you a sticker when I see you. So, to live, you need two things. Energy, because it gives you heat, and it can help you do all kinds of things. And water. You can't live without water. 75% of your body is water. You need it to survive. Um, those two things are knowledge of those supporting life is how we base all of our research into what could be a planet that supports life. Um, the first thing is that we know that um, any planet that supports life is going to be in a solar system. It's going to be orbiting a star of some sort. How old that star is, how big that star is, we'll get to in a minute. So. There's a thing that we call the habitable zone of a star, or from a star. And I'll show you in this picture. I hope you can see it, yes. Okay, so over here, we have the star. I drew it kind of like the sun. And we have a planet here, a planet here, and a planet here. This star is giving off lots and lots of heat and energy. This little planet in orange is way too hot. It can't support life. This planet all in blue out here, it's way too cold. It can't support life either. This imaginary planet that is blue and orange is in the sweet spot. It can support life. It has just enough heat, but it's not too hot and it's not too cold, like Earth. So if you were to think about this, the habitable zone is that little sweet spot between too hot and too cold. An example in our solar system is Mercury is way too hot and Neptune is way too cold. Earth is in that sweet spot. Not too hot, not too cold. That has to do a lot of um, with water, water's existence on the planet. So on Earth, because we're in the sweet spot, our water doesn't immediately boil and disappear and our water doesn't immediately freeze and is unusable. We have water in all three forms, liquid, solid, gas throughout our Earth, and the sun doesn't cause us too much trouble with it. Um, mercury would be way too hot. Water would evaporate immediately. You can't use it. And out on Neptune, it's way too cold for any water to be unfrozen. Another important part about water is that it has to have um, a good enough pH. Remember, pH of water is 7, but you can be within a slight range of that. Um, also, something like the right salinity. You know that we can't drink salt water. We need to refine it first. So if there's a bunch of water all over the planet, but it is 100% salt water, and there's no fresh water anywhere, it won't support life without us somehow figuring out how to refine all the water there. Um, going into the star, that would be the center of the solar system, it has to be the right size, it has to be the right age, can't be too old or too young because it would be too hot or too cold, whatever. Um, and again, if star's too old, as we've learned before, they tend to explode and eat everything in its path. Um, so the star's uh, characteristics are very important itself. We would assume that close to our sun in character six. Um, the size of the planet would have to be somewhere between half the size to double the size 
of planet Earth. Uh, too big, it can't support life. Too small, it can't support life. It's generally assumed that the geochemistry of this planet would have to be um, similar to Earth. So, for example, in the atmosphere, our four most common elements are hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and carbon in certain amounts. And it's generally assumed that an atmosphere would have to have those four most common elements in certain amounts in its atmosphere as well. Um, pretty much in abundance. Also, these planets would have to have some sort of land mass. So, think of a planet like Jupiter. It is a gas giant, meaning there is no actual land mass. It's not terrestrial. There's nothing for an astronaut to land on. Um, there has been some research into what's called some good Jupiters, some possible gas giants that could maybe support life, but that's pretty that's some pretty inconclusive research. There are um, there has been a lot of research into things that are uh, the moons of some gas giants that may be able to support life. So a lot of our research has been based on what we know supports life on Earth because nothing else in our solar system we have found has found any um, signs of past life or current life. There aren't any aliens in our solar system right now. Um, so we have gone to extrapolating our data to everything we're able to see out in the galaxy. And we have found um, multiple planets that could possibly support life um, using a lot of imaging and uh, like radio waves to measure certain amounts of elements or is there water there, all that kind of stuff. But they're so far away that we haven't been able to send an actual like uh, robot out there, satellite. Um, even if we did right now, they have not reached it because they're over a couple light years away. So the biggest one that we've, uh, the most promising one we've found so far was found in 2015. It's about 1400 light years away from Earth in the constellation Cygnus, and it's named Kepler 452b. It is in the habitable zone of a sun-like star. Um, it's about 1.6 times larger than Earth, and that's pretty much all we know about it. It has a lot of characteristics of things like Earth as far as we can tell, but again, it's so far away that we haven't gotten anything to it yet. Maybe when you one day we'll grow up and help NASA figure all that out. All right, so that's all about what makes planets livable. Uh, there's no homework for today, but starting tomorrow you will have the planet project. I will get all that rubric and all that information uploaded for you. Just make sure you took plenty of notes on this, okay? Bye!